Hello Isopod fans, this is Wally Kern with Supreme Isopods and today we're looking at another setup. And this one's going to be special because it's from the Zebra Queen herself. Join me. The Isopod Vlog For those of you wondering, yes, this mic clip is a binder clip. I make do, that's what I do. These isopod setup reviews are a fun thing for me to do and from what I've heard, the responses that I've gotten back from you, you're learning a lot from these reviews. And I appreciate you watching and I appreciate you submitting. The whole process is if you have your isopod setup that you want me to review, go ahead and send in a one minute clip telling me about the isopods that you're keeping in there, how long you've been keeping them, the, something about the substrate, the leaves, the wood, the, the uh, moist area, uh, anything that you can, the ventilation, anything that you can tell me about that isopod setup, I'll do a review. It'll be very professional, very tactful. It's all about learning on this channel. And we'll take a look at your isopod setup and I'll offer some suggestions. So we had a recent comment from Zach Miller saying that I use the word words, moist area too much in our videos. Actually, he was joking and he considered making it a drinking game. If I said moist area, you have to take a drink. Well, that's up to you, but now I'm going to be subconscious about that and I'm probably going to stutter. So, so I'm going to try to watch how much I say that, but it, I know it's going to slip out. Let's go ahead and get to the video. And this one is from ML Richardson and she again is doing Armadillidium maculatum zebras. And I know she has a ton of zebra colonies and she's doing some amazing things with these zebras. All kinds of different patterns and colors and, and morphs. And actually, I should be submitting my zebra enclosure for her to review. She's doing such a great job with the zebras. But let's go ahead and take a look at her setup. And we'll see if we can find anything to uh, maybe improve or change in her setup. Let's go ahead and take a look. This is a brand new setup. It's a 20 quart Sterilite bin. There's holes drilled in the top for ventilation. I would prefer having a screen on there, but I didn't get that done today. There's holes drilled in one end for ventilation. Uh, the substrate is an ABG mix. Uh, this culture of uh, Armadillidium maculatum zebras came with that because there was a uh, man K in there and we didn't want to lose them. We'll go ahead and stop right there. So it sounds like this is a whole setup that you received in the mail. You bought from somewhere. You received all the substrate, the ABG mix, um, maybe the leaves, maybe everything in the whole uh, setup. And you received the Armadillidium maculatum zebras. Looks good. Real, it looks really good so far. The ventilation, it sounds like you're just putting this setup together. Um, you have some holes on the side and I want to mention to everybody, the holes on the side are great for cross ventilation. Um, if you're going to put holes in your, your uh, containers, make sure that you're putting them on opposite size, so sides of the container so that you get that cross ventilation. You're not showing the top, or I think you did show the top and there's holes there. You want to put in some uh, screen, which you said that you would do. The only thing that I would add there is I would like to see maybe larger holes. If you're having success, everybody's conditions are different and you have to adjust your setup to how your conditions are. I would like to see bigger holes, but if this is working for you, you know, don't change a thing, especially with ventilation and, and the moisture in the enclosure. Uh, the substrate, again, you mentioned that it's ABG looks really good. ABG is a great substrate for millipedes and for isopods. Um, it could be a little bit deeper. I would like to see a, a, a substrate of about two to three inches or so. If this is working for you, that's great, but I'd like to see that substrate a little bit deeper. Let's keep going. I've got a shell down there which has a mixture of foods, carrot, which was uh, they were shipped with. There's leaf litter. I usually use bark, like cork bark, but I was out of that. So we have, I believe this is uh, from Sycamore. We're going to stop right there. 
I'm not sure what those chips are. That's kind of interesting. Let me know if that works for you, if they start eating it, if they, they stay by those uh, the Sycamore chips, if they're staying by them. Um, I'm, I mentioned this in another video. I'm not much of a fan of food dishes. I like to put the food right on the substrate. And the reason I like to do that is to allow the manky, the, the babies, to get to that food. Again, if this is working for you, that's great. Uh, but I just don't use dishes at all in my, in my setups. You mentioned that you're feeding your isopods the carrots. I'm not having as much success feeding carrots as I do with zucchinis and softer vegetables. Not super soft like, um, like cucumbers, but something in between like a zucchini or a pumpkin or some kind of a squash. Uh, not as firm as a, a carrot. And again, maybe that's just me, but I just don't have the success in feeding carrots. The leaves, love it. Great job. Lots and lots and lots of leaves in here. Great job. Let's keep going. And I have some sticks piled up in there, little bits of uh, lichen, lichen, mossy, mossy uh, bark there. And then I've got moss on this end. There's more moss than I'd usually put in there, but they came with their sphagnum moss so I just put that in there with them and the rest of its Pacific Northwest uh, forest moss. Let's go ahead and stop right there. The first thing that I see is the moss it looks like it's a little bit dry. It's this is the hardest thing for me to judge is how moist your sphagnum moss is or your uh, the area in your enclosure that's wetter but not wet. Um, <laughs> trying to stay away from a couple of words there, but that area should be moist, but not wet. And that moss seems to be a little bit dry. At least it does to me. Maybe it's fine, you know, when, when you're looking at this enclosure. You mentioned that you're going to put some wood in there, uh, make sure that it's a wood that they can go from the dry area over to the moist area. You have lots of leaves though. They can make that uh, travel from uh, the gradient that they want, the dry gradient, that, dr the dry gradient that they want over to the moist gradient that they want. But everything so far looks really, really good. Let's keep going with the video. And there's two of the new inhabitants. Looking pretty I agree. happy. Okay, great video. Thanks again for the submission. In summary, what I like to do is grade from a red to an orange to a yellow to a green. Red meaning that there's something major in, in this enclosure and you probably are going to start losing isopods immediately. This is certainly is not uh, red. Orange means that you're probably, probably going to lose isopods eventually because of some issue. This certainly isn't orange. Uh, yellow would be you're not going to get the optimal care for your uh, isopods, you probably aren't going to get the optimal number of babies. So I would put this right on that green, yellow, probably more green than yellow. You're probably fine with this setup. I, I don't see anything major with this setup. Minor would be make sure that you're feeding. Here's what I would do. I would feed some softer vegetables like pumpkin, squash, uh, zucchini would be a good vegetable. I've just found with the armadillidium, especially with the zebras, they like those softer vegetables a little bit more. Let's take a look at the, the, the uh, video I'm kind of paging up here. Um, again, I would add a little bit more ventilation. I'd like to see some more ventilation, especially on the top. You've got a good airflow going in the enclosure, but that ventilation on top, um, I think the zebras like that additional ventilation. The wood hide, I would certainly have a piece more concave going from the, the uh, dry area over to the damper area. Got past it. Uh, I caught myself. Uh, deeper substrate, certainly. I would like to see some deeper substrate here, maybe about three inches deep. It looks like it's maybe an inch, an inch and a half, but it might be my perception. And I would like to see you feeding on the substrate uh, rather than a food dish. It's minor. It really is. It's really a minor point. Uh, but once you start getting babies, I just feel that they're more comfortable taking food right from the uh, substrate rather than trying to find a food dish. I just like to take away any um, 
possible issues with the babies getting the amount of food that they really, really need. Other than that, I think he did a great job with this setup. And again, you're the Zebra Queen. I should be sending my setups to you for review. Thank you very much for the submission. Really appreciate it. And everybody watching the video, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this format, hit that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and hit the notification at all. If you would like your enclosure reviewed, please you know comment below uh, and we can uh, get in contact with each other. And again, I'm looking for a one minute uh, video that you can send in talking about your isopod setup. Thanks again for watching.